Hi Pisces, Rosemary at Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your September 2022 astrology. Well, Pisces, um, let's let's start off by saying there's going to be a full moon in your sign on September 10th. And I always say to leave a few days on either side of the full moon, um, just not to get over emotional or not to get triggered about anything um, especially with a full moon in your sign, it's easy. You're a water sign. It's easy, you know, to tap into that emotion, to feel particularly um, triggered or upset or be more reactive than usual. But it's always a good ta uh, idea to let that energy die down a bit and then to approach things rationally. Now, having said this, I want to talk about what's going on across from you in your seventh house. Now, the seventh house is committed partnerships, and we usually think marriage. It can also be business partnerships. The house is all, um, you know, duets and duels, as astrologer Jessica Adams says. So it can also be the competition. It can be rivals. It can be opponents. Um, you know, it's also one of the houses of even enemies. The sun is there in your seventh house, so it's bringing emphasis to that area, and Venus is there as well. Venus uh, representing love, beauty, romance. Um, you know, Venus is also related to wealth. So probably, um, you know, what you're looking at this month is maybe something more in terms of committed partnerships. Perhaps there's going to be simply a focus there. Maybe there's a focus there for a particular reason. With Venus there, things are going to be very harmonious, very romantic very loving. Um, it could be that your partnership is moving up another level, is intensifying, is deepening. Don't forget, you know, our, our partnerships or our, um, our relationship, let's say, with a committed partner plays off on us. And, you know, relationships make us change, hopefully help us evolve. And, you know, when we change and evolve, it also affects our relationships because sometimes we can outgrow relationships, for example. Now, this could also apply to a business partnership that, um, you know, is, is becoming more important. You know, Venus can represent uh, cooperation and, um, you know, a lot of uh, diplomacy, harmonious relationships. So that could be also in terms of a business partnership. You know, if you're focusing more on uh, the competition or, or rivals in your life or, you know, you do have someone that is actually, um, you know, almost an enemy to you, this could be a whole killing them with kindness type of approach. But I'm getting uh, more the feeling this will relate to, um, you know, committed partnerships or, um, you know, really marriages, deeper, more um, official, official pairings as opposed to something in the fifth house, which is more just uh, more casual or romantic uh, partnerships. Anyway, having said this, um, you know, so there's, there's going to be a play back and forth here. Now, Neptune has been in your sign for a long time. And if uh, Pisces is your son, you know, our, uh, the, air, the place of um, our son has a lot to do with our personality, our vitality, who we see ourselves as being. If it's your rising sign, it's the face you present to the world. So, you know, your sun sign will be one thing and your rising sign will be another. And perhaps, you know, Neptune is um, the modern ruler of Pisces and Neptune brings a lot of blurring of boundaries. So perhaps the last few years, and I say this because Neptune has been there for several years in your sign, you've been redefining who you are and you perhaps have been doing that through your committed partnership or through your marriage. So as the relationship changes and evolves, who you are changes and evolves as well. And these long cycles through uh, certain signs, especially when I think of Neptune and Pluto up here, um, you know, there's smaller cycles within there. The full moon is going to trigger a smaller cycle for sure. So it'll illuminate something about you. Um, it'll shed light on something. It'll bring something to completion or to fruition. And that in turn is going to impact on what's going on in the seventh house. And with the sun in your seventh and Venus, the focus being there, that in turn is also going to reflect back on who you are and who you see yourself as being or conceive of yourself as being. So, you know, with an opposition, the idea is to try to reach a happy medium, you know, something that um, works for your partnership and something that works for you as well. Now, Mercury is here in Libra in your eighth house. 
Eighth house, one house over from committed partnerships. So a lot to do with the resources and the finances of your partner. It can also be resources of someone else in a general way. So a loan, I always, I often say, or a grant or someone that is going to give you money. You know, the eighth house is in inheritances, wills, estates. So it can easily be something in that respect, but often it relates to our partner's money. With Mercury there, you are going to be communicating a lot about that, talking a lot about that. Um, Mercury can also even represent, you know, Mercury, the, the um, planet related to commerce. Mercury was a, the messenger of the gods in ancient mythology. So, you know, Mercury facilitates transit. Mercury can represent contracts of some sort. So perhaps there is some sort of contractual agreement around money or some sort of financing. Perhaps you are just thinking and talking about uh, resources, your partner's resources, how they are pooled, how they are shared. It could be something like that. Don't forget though that on September 10th, Mercury goes retrograde. So, um, you know, the energy will diminish. It won't be a good time to initiate anything. If you are entering some sort of uh, contract that has to do with shared resources, don't sign anything after the 10th. It's always not a good idea to um, commit to anything when Mercury is retrograde, especially commerce, um, you know, related things. Uh, it also applies in a more general way, and I'll just throw this in to purchases of, um, you know, anything technology related, anything communication related. So, um, you know, if you have to make sure you read and reread and make sure there's warranties and guarantees, but ideally get all that wrapped up before the 10th when Mercury goes retrograde. And Mercury is going to go retrograde all the way back into, whoops, into Virgo. And that's going to be on September 24th. Mercury likes to deliver a message because he was the messenger. So this might bring an energy to wrap something up or to finalize something in relation to this, um, you know, partnership of the seventh house. And Mercury is going to retrograde uh, all the way back to 24 degrees of Virgo. And at that point is going to go direct again. So that is the same place he was on August 21st. So while you are focusing on seventh house topics um, with the sun and Venus there, Mercury is going to slip in and maybe show you a repeat pattern. And Mercury's energy is going to deliver a message and possibly help you conclude. Um, Mercury retrogrades are a great time to do research, a great time to finalize projects that have been started. So this Mercury energy coming to join up with Venus and um, the sun might bring a completion or, um, you know, the, the end of a project and something related to, to partnerships. And I don't want to make it sound like it's the end of, you know, your, your partnership or your marriage or your, your, your committed relationship. Not at all. But, you know, maybe you've been discussing something for quite a long time. Maybe it's something to do with, you know, actually getting married or taking the relationship to another level or, um, you know, living together or something that is more committed. And now, um, you know, with Mercury, that is, is finally going to conclude. That's more, as I said, um, towards the very end of the month, beginning of October. And as Mercury retrogrades, Mercury is going to pass Venus at 26, 27 degrees of Virgo, um, just as Venus slowly slips into Libra on the 29th, so a few days later, and Mercury is going to continue going back a little bit before going forward again. But on the 26th, 27th of September, these two are going to be very close together. So if there is something you have to tell your partner or you want to share, or as I said, one of, um, you know, a conclusion you've come to or a repeat pattern you've seen, your communications are going to be very, very sweet and very diplomatic with Venus there. So whatever you have to express or share is probably going to go over much better at this time because you have this this beneficial energy of Venus um, making Mercury a a gentle and diplomatic and uh, kind communicator. There's a lot of cooperative energy with Venus, and Venus um, 
I find is because of this desire for harmony is very adaptable. So, um, you know, whatever communications you, you have, whatever you say is going to be um, with a lot of feeling for the other person, right? There's um, a much more general inclusive focus as opposed to Mars that is very single-minded. So just remember those dates, the 26th, the 27th of September, but Mercury will still be retrograde. So again, don't initiate um, anything new, um, especially like I said, in terms of purchases or, um, you know, contracts, but do use that energy to conclude something, especially in relation uh, to a relationship, you know, to, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word in English. In French, you say like to make, to make the point, like to agree on something and then be able to move forward from there. That's what I wanted to say. And then be able to progress and evolve within your relationship for both of you. And then of course, that's going to, um, as I said, affect your personal uh, growth and evolution. So having said this, put Mercury back here where he is right now. Whoops, making a mess. Venus and the sun there. The other big thing going on this month, and actually this started um, at the end of August, is Mars moved into Gemini in your fourth house. Now, your fourth house has everything to do with family and home, actual blood family or your chosen family, people you consider your family, people you are actually related to. Um, home can be actual physical real estate where you live, your house, your flat, your condo. Um, it can be where you feel at home, for example. Now, Mars brings a lot of energy to that area, and Mars will be there exceptionally for seven months. So if you are thinking about something as physical and tangible as, um, you know, buying real estate or renovating or redecorating where you are, this is a great time to do so. If you are thinking about something in relation to family, as I said, family of origin or family of choice, um, you know, some sort of change, uh, addition to a family, uh, some, you know, modification to your family situation. This is also a good time. The thing to remember is that Gemini is uh, very much about thoughts and ideas and mental activity. And Gemini can think of a lot of things at once. So if you, you know, start focusing on maybe you know, this is one example, should you move or should you redecorate or renovate where you are? Gemini is going to come up with a million ideas and a million reasons for each option. The trick is to focus on one thing and then use Mars's energy to pursue it. Mars is very focused and Mars is a great energy if you know how to, um, to harness it. Mars is a motor, right? So if you just, whatever you put Mars on, it'll go, but you have to decide what that one thing you want to go is. So if you're going to, you know, going back to my example, take the tangent of redecorating or renovating where you are, then, you know, use Mars's energy to, um, you know, maybe consult with a decorator or a designer, decide what you're going to do, plan a budget, see how long it's going to take, you know, devise a timeline. If it's, you know, shopping for a new place to live, well, you know, um, do your research and, you know, focus your energy on that. Or as I said, it could be, um, you know, in relation to a family thing, but, you know, do focus on one thing and let Mars, uh, with his single mindedness, um, you know, and that his strong energy, um, use that to, to reach the, the goal you want to reach. Don't forget Mars, um, you know, the downside of Mars, cause there's a downside to all the, the planets or all the signs is that Mars can be very abrasive. He doesn't worry too much what other people are thinking or doing, completely different from Venus. So just guard against being too argumentative or too single-minded um, in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, stepping on some toes or ruffling some feathers or, um, you know, even Mars was the god of war. So, you know, this could even degenerate into arguments about um, something family related, you know, maybe you have a vision for your family or a change you want to bring about. But if you go full force with Mars, this energy, it sort of tends to, you know, it's like doing something with no regard for anybody else. So don't get too over focused with Mars and do remember, you know, you're going to have to consider other people, especially as the fourth house does relate to family. 
Also on another note, and this might not apply to all of you, but at the end of the month when Venus has moved into the eighth house and the sun has moved in, or the sun on the 22nd, Venus on the 29th, uh, Mercury will still be back here in, um, in Virgo and then join up. Um, you know, the eighth house, as I said, other people's resources, usually our partner's resources in relation to the, um, the fourth, there's a trine going on here, which is easy energy. It's energy that flows. So you might also see a link between, you know, your partner's money, home situation, family situation. You know, th there could be some energy going back and forth here. It's beneficial. Um, it usually flows easily, but there might definitely be a link or some discussion might come up, you know, especially if you're looking to change something up on the home front and it means, um, you know, a financial investment, of course, if you are, you know, with a partner or um, in a family situation, you know, this could implicate also, obviously, right, your, your partner's resources in that aspect. On a more general note, and this will probably be the object of another video, all the planets except for Mars and Venus are retrograde. So, you know, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus. And that's a lot of, you know, deja vu energy, of repeat patterns, of finding yourself in the same situation over again. You've had Neptune in your sign for a very long time and now on a retrograde again. So another sort of cycle within the cycle. And this isn't really the time to initiate anything, especially also with the Mercury retrograde. This is more of a time to, I say, sit back, relax and watch things unfold look for those, you know, repeats, look for things that are also concluding. Sometimes, you know, it's something that goes back several months and you think, oh, finally, you know, this, this situation has come to an end or, um, you know, this dragging event or dragging, you know, pattern has, has finally concluded. It's hard to really go out and take action at this time. It's more of a time to observe and see where the, the repeats lie. See where you find yourself doing again something that you really don't want to do anymore or you're involved in something that you really don't want to be involved in anymore or, you know, like called to play a role that, that doesn't suit you or you don't, or you don't want to partake in that anymore. And then, um, you know, as things shift in 2023 and some of the planets begin to move forward again at the end of the year, um, you'll be able to to move ahead with that and you'll know what to, um, you know, what to avoid and what to look out for and where to make changes. So Pisces, that's everything I wanted to tell you for this month. So don't forget to like if you liked, uh, subscribe and share this with someone you think might find it interesting. Have a wonderful month of September. Take care. Love you. Bye.